Welcome to Copy Traders Club, where you can learn how to make more money copy trading. I'm Gavin McCauley, my name and username on eToro. You can continue the conversation on Discord and Facebook. If you like this podcast and you want to see it continue, well, you can do your part by recommending it to one person or group of people this week. Today is a solo episode, so here we go. Episode 41, and this is an unscheduled solo episode. It was meant to be with an eToro representative, but unfortunately, that was unexpectedly postponed. So I'm rearranging the schedule a little, and so on with today's solo episode, divided as ever into three parts. Part 1 Takeaways from the last few episodes. Part 2 Portfolio Update. And Part 3 My Copy Trading Manifesto. So part one. Let's tiptoe through the tulips of the last few episodes. Up first we have Wesley. Great episode with Wesley. I suspected from his videos and tweets that he had a pretty good sense of humour and would cope well with the mild ribbing of him for my pleasure. And he didn't disappoint. He was a good sport and took it on the chin. Or should I say... Neck rich. He was also open to considering whether his bio representations were open to criticism. Having said that, I see no changes to it. Wes has a few too many UK stocks for my liking, but he will be one PI I will be recommending to my sister to check out as she starts dipping her toe in the world of copy trading. Next up, we had Mark OD89. In this episode, we spoke to Mark O'Donnell, a little-known Irish PI, the kind of guy who might struggle for any oxygen of publicity on the platform. But he might be the kind of PI you are looking for, one who sees crypto as an important part of his portfolio, but seeks to balance out the risk and volatility with carefully selected stocks and ETFs. Nice fella. Young dad. I hope he progresses and will be keeping an eye on him. After that we had capital gains. Nick Burke is a bit of an older brother figure to Mark OD, 89. Not a hugely dissimilar approach to investing, given his crypto-slash-equity combo, but Nick has been at it longer and has copier numbers in the four figures. He has fantastic results, although he's on the other side of the debate over resetting the portfolio to maintain sync. That is an issue all copiers should fully understand, and it came up in the Gaspar Hugo Felix conversation I will discuss in a moment. Overall though, it was very revealing to get to know Nick, a PI about whom I knew very little beforehand. Good taste in music too. The next episode was with Rahana. I love talking to other copiers and eToro enthusiasts. It's a very different vibe from talking to PIs. We were able to have a good natter about the platform, how much we love it, but also where it doesn't quite live up to its potential. Nice to be able to goss about PIs without either of us worrying, like PIs do about what they can and cannot say about other PIs. Rahana has some really good ideas, a voice worth listening to. We wish her luck on her journey. Finally, the most recent episode was Gaspar Hugo Felix. This was only the third ever roundtable episode of Copy Traders Club. I think the one-on-one PI episodes are really the core holdings of the podcast, if you will, but the Totally Toro chats are Tier 1 satellite episodes. Two things combined here to make this one of the best episodes, I think. Three very distinct subjects. 
is a crash coming, desync, and eToro's future focus. Plus, we had three very thoughtful guests, each of whom brings something different to the table. Coming up in part two, portfolio update. <laughs> Part 2. Portfolio Update. There haven't been many changes to my portfolio since the last solo episode. I did have to remove Smith & Wesson from my copy of Lizzie Apukaya. I'm not sure if there's any need to go into the details of not wanting to be invested in a company that literally profits from death and pain and violence. I previously had to remove arms manufacturer Lockheed Martin from my copy of Robert Merck. It's pretty disappointing that I have to go around disarming my PIs. I feel like I'm working on the set of Alec Baldwin's next movie. There are so many opportunities out there. Is it really too much to ask that my four PIs simply avoid the merchants of death? Anyway, cryptos are doing nicely. All PIs are in green. Year-to-date returns of 56.74, which is a pleasing number. I should be able to not only filter people from crypto in the stats, but also see how they're doing overall as individual asset classes within my portfolio. That would be another improvement to the platform. Of course, the list of potential improvements that have arisen from Copy Traders Club is already huge. I've also opened up a second eToro account for my own investing portfolio. It's just for myself, a place for me to buy up a few bargains and watch them slowly turn the corner and rise again. I don't intend to make that public, but who knows? If it turns out that the only way to earn a few bucks from my interest in eToro is by becoming yet another average PI, then I might just reinvent myself as yet another average PI. While there are some PIs who I definitely could not go toe-to-toe with in a macroeconomic debate, I also see loads of PIs scooping up a tasty wage from eToro without any evidence that they have any particular skill set beyond my own. In fact, I definitely think I could do some things, like communicate, better than them. Of course, I think building the podcast would be a much better application of my strengths than being a PI. However, as the Stranglers wisely counsel us, but the money's no good, just get a grip of yourself. Link in the show notes. I am indeed getting a grip of myself right now, listeners know that. Coming up in part three, my copy trading manifesto. Dear listener, just a little pause here to say a few things directly to you. The calendar is full until the end of the year. That will mean 52 episodes, which seems like a good time to pause and call it season one and take stock. It's been a lot of fun and a lot of time and effort, but I'm pleased to be creating something of value for eToro users, particularly copy traders. Whether there will be a season two depends on a number of factors. I say it elsewhere, but I want to repeat it again here to really encourage a little action from you. If you want to see the podcast continue, you can help by bringing more listeners in. A lot of people still don't know about Copy Traders Club, so post about it on your PI's feed in eToro. Mention it on a Facebook group or in whatever Discord groups you're in. That's not too much of an ask, is it? On the podcast apps, there's always a share function that includes copy link. Use that 
or copy the YouTube channel link and share that. Or share a link to your favourite episode. There are many ways to eat an orange. I also have one of those affiliate links for new eToro signups in every episode's show notes. So, if you know someone interested in signing up, please copy and send them that link and help support the show that way. Now, I know these calls to action that you hear on podcasts can easily be ignored, and I always ignore them myself. Let's be honest. But this time, I am asking you, as someone who listens to and enjoys this one-person independent podcast, to make a little effort to help it along. You can even press pause and take two minutes to do it right now. If you do, know that I am grateful. If you don't, every time you hear this bit, you will be overcome with a crippling sense of guilt and unworthiness. Until you do. Back to the show. Part 3. My Copy Trading Manifesto. This has come up a few times on the podcast, and now I suppose it is time to practice what I preach, writing down my copy trading manifesto. I will keep it to refer to from time to time, as the emotions and pressures of having money in the markets give rise to self-doubt and the desire to act on impulse. Okay, so here is mine. Point one. What is my eToro portfolio for? It is a place to build wealth over time, possibly with the ultimate goal being a source of passive income. Point two, what is my timeline? I intend to have my eToro portfolio for many years. Unless I lose faith in eToro itself, I imagine I will have it for a very long time. Point three, what is my approach to copy trading? to select a small number of PIs with complementary approaches and to stay with them for a long time. Only over the long term will I get the best out of them. None of my PIs are acting for the short term, so why would I? My approach may not be the best approach, but it's good enough for me, I'm happy with it, and I believe I can stick to it in the long term. Point four, explain my PI choices and what I expect from them. Samosa King, value investor looking for outsized returns from a small number of undervalued stocks upon catalyzing events taking place. I do not expect steady monthly returns, but occasional spikes upon the realization of his investment theses. 2021 is looking largely like the GameStop only story. I expect 2022 to return multiple but smaller return spikes. Robert Merck, dogged investor always on the lookout for opportunities of varying sizes and timescales, works hard, has delivered regular and very good returns since copying. The most consistent performer. I expect more of the same and would be delighted with that. Is the PI of the four I can see myself with for the longest period? Team Captain. Elite Vol. Trades volatility, so is in the portfolio as ballast. He's meant to bring balance to the portfolio and steady the ship in rough waters. He did that earlier in 2021, but not in September, which was disappointing says he has learned from that. I do expect him to deliver good returns, but not necessarily the highest overall returns from among my PIs. And I expect him to do well when others don't. I still have faith, but he needs to continue to do the job he is there to do. Lizzie Apokaya invests in interesting forward-looking themes. Took me a while to get into the green with him, but now we are there. Replaced Tradebetter, whose performance has gone way downhill 
since I got rid of him. So that gives Levy an even warmer glow in my eyes. My hope is that he has the kind of portfolio that could do very well in good times and not suffer too much in a downturn. Point five. Is this well diversified? Overall, I'm quite happy with these four as a team. They all bring something different to the party. Given the crypto I also own in this portfolio, I'm happy with the asset class distribution. On the subject of diversification, note that this eToro portfolio is not the only financial vehicle I have, so I don't expect it to be the most perfectly diversified set of assets. Neither should anyone viewing it from the outside. This portfolio is much more crypto-heavy than in my overall finances. Beyond this portfolio, I have investments in Forex, stocks, cash, and a little crypto. So diversification is a matter for the person's finances as a whole. And the final point, read this in times of stress. This portfolio is meant for the long term. Most of the time the world doesn't end. It also doesn't represent a great proportion of my net worth. No need to freak out. If everything is red, the worst thing to do is lock in losses by stopping a copy. These PIs are all, in their own way, good stewards of my cash and likely to make it grow in the long term. Don't be tempted to act out of emotion. Don't try to chase the market. They can handle it. You trusted them to do their thing when market conditions were favourable. Now let them do their thing now that the market conditions have changed. Consider how best to profit from the circumstances. As with direct investing, it makes sense to buy when prices are low. So consider how much and when to add to these copies. Perhaps not in equal amounts. Assess each PI's strategy and activity and allocate accordingly. In time, you will look back at this period with a different view. Maybe it was just a blip. Maybe it was a period of increased uncertainty. Maybe it was a great buying opportunity. In any case, now is a time to be cool and sensible. So that's my manifesto. I'm saving it somewhere for future use. When times are tough, I can see my clear-headed thoughts and reaffirm my objectives and best practices. So hopefully these will act as clear, firm instructions during the heat of battle when emotions are trying to cause me to take action. That's all from me. You can continue the conversation on Discord and Facebook. If you like this podcast, and indeed you want to see it continue, well then, you can do your part by recommending it to one person or group of people this week. Until next time we meet at Copy Traders Club, I wish you many happy returns. Obviously, anything here in this podcast is for entertainment only, not financial advice. Do your own research. This is just generic chit chat. We don't know your individual circumstances, etc., etc., and so forth.